Now, there are a few other things because genetics play a role. And it's, it's a little tricky. I just want to give you a flavor for it. So what we see is in mothers who are diabetic, they're more likely to have children who are diabetic. Number one. Two, if mother eats a lot of sugar at once during the pregnancy, it will actually reset and undermine the child's mechanism of insulin production. That's pretty significant. So during pregnancy, the mothers play a role here that is important. Also, toxin exposure is another thing that adds to it, particularly during pregnancy. It can affect the beta cells of the pancreas of the fetus. Kind of keeping that in mind. We also found, as they say, there's a metabolic memory. But what I'm telling you is, and what I'm telling you is, that metabolic memory may start in utero. That's how important it is, particularly for women who are pregnant, to really get on top of their blood sugar issues. And that. Now, there is a program that if you just, this is the Baker Institute in Melbourne, Australia, if you just have a helping of sugar, it will activate your genes to crave sugar for the next two weeks. It doesn't seem fair, does it? But that's the way it is. So really staying away from that is important. Now, this is the main focus of what I want to talk about is I call crimes against wisdom. So I'm looking at things that cause diabetes. Of course, if we get that straightened out, what happens is we can begin to prevent it and also heal it. So I've mentioned sugar is a big player. And there's no question, 20 years after white flour, white sugar, and junk food get into a, a society, there's an outbreak of diabetes. That is what happens. So, now, most people think fructose is an exception. I will be talking about it. Fructose is not an exception. When they introduced fructose in the 1980s, well, and, and the, between 1980 and 1997, there's a 2,100% increase in diabetes. Very much correlated with the high fructose uh, corn syrup but general, fructose is not uh, immune. Fructose does a lot of things which I'm going to talk about, but it dysregulates the leptin insulin signaling and uh, doesn't turn, doesn't communicate to ghrelin, which is a hormone that says, okay, you're full, stop eating already. Doesn't do that. So people who eat a lot of fructose tend to have a lot more obesity. Soft drinks, which are connected with the fructose, are, uh, have been shown to significantly increase the rate of diabetes. The research varies somewhere between 10 times to 1,000 times more, depending on the research. Uh, please understand research does vary. We call it science, but the way to understand it is you have to look at all the studies before you can make a statement. So there's a range. But there's no question, soda drinks are a big driving factor be behind the world epidemic of diabetes. This is particularly true I enter Mexico in terms of uh, uh, Africa. People are doing a lot of soft drinks beyond belief. Now the next is animal fat. And we're going to talk a lot about that because we need to understand that's a big player, like probably the second most important player here. And I mentioned obesity. Believe it or not, watching TV, they did a study, uh, men who watch TV m more than s 19 hours a week have a 150% increase in type 2 diabetes. Just to give you a kind of insight, um, we're going to talk about antibiotics, statin use, vaccines. They all contribute. Now, vaccines are more about type 1. And, well, maybe I'll mention it for just for a second. Studies in New Zealand and Finland show that when kids are uh, given the vaccines, their rates of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, increases about 60%, roughly speaking. Some are a little less, some are up to 147%. And that's uh, the research was doing with the MMR and also the Hep uh, B vaccine, which you don't really need anyway, but that's not the point. Mm -hmm.